My name is Michael Caccioni, and on July of 1994, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease, which is a form of cancer. I then overwent six months of chemotherapy and was believed to be cured and doing great, but unfortunately I relapsed afterwards and had to go through heavy chemotherapy, a bone marrow transplant, and 12 radiation treatments. Michael was diagnosed with cancer at nine and a half years old, and that's when our lives changed forever. I was an active nine and a half year old boy, loved my sports, loved school activities, and then a bombshell hit my life. It was, it was a shock. Through Michael's ordeal with all of these cancer treatments and procedures, he always had a positive attitude, even at times when he was struggling and he did have, you know, fear of what was going to happen next, but he seemed to just take whatever was in front of him and keep going and keep knowing that in the end he was going to make it through. It's like getting a flu like a hundred times over, like just, it's terrible and there's lots of different feelings with different types of treatment. There were times when of course I was scared, but there was also times when you know, I knew I'd make it. I, I knew I had a positive attitude. I had faith in God and I had the support from my family and friends. I had those three, three things on my side and uh, that's definitely half the battle. From the first moment Michael was diagnosed with cancer and shared a room with a baby that was born with cancer, he knew he wanted to make a difference. He could not believe babies were born with cancer. And hearing these children crying and, and suffering with this disease, if you don't have the heart to reach out and help, then I don't, I don't know, you know, I don't know how anyone could just walk away and just think, oh great, it's over for me. Believe it or not, Michael used to look forward going for his treatments, knowing that he was going to meet his friends that are going through the same ordeal. The sad part was that one week during treatment he'd be playing Nintendo with one boy and then his next treatment that boy would be gone. Michael became a cancer crusader through writing his own songs while he was going through his two battles of cancer because he was determined to make a difference and find a cure for childhood cancer. And by the time he was 11 years old, he put a CD out and, and raised $130,000 to make a difference. I wrote five songs and I've got a CD out to raise money for cancer research. One person can only do so much. But together, we can make a difference. Michael went through six months of chemotherapy and was cancer-free. He got the good news that everything was okay, and but it was very short-lived. Six months later, the cancer was back, and that call was devastating. We had to find a way to tell Michael this bad news. He was going to be a very, very tough road ahead to have to go through a bone marrow transplant. I was confused. But I never once blamed God because I knew in the back of my mind all the time, even before I had this disease, that everything was happened for a reason and everything was meant to be. And I remember one prayer distinctively when I was in bone marrow transplant and I remember asking him to get me through this as fast and as easy as possible so I could start doing what I had planned to do and making this difference. One of the really striking things about Michael was uh, his positive approach to life. Everything in life, you can look at it negative or positive. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Be positive. He was always looking forward to what he was going to be able to do to contribute to help people. Um, and that was something very unique in a, a teenager when most teenagers I know are more interested in what's going to happen tomorrow and what's going to be at school. He was thinking much bigger than that. Michael, I know that uh, you're going to do something very special with uh, the $1,000 award. What's that? Well, uh, as much as I may need a new pair of jeans, there's people out there that need this money more than me, so this is going towards my fund to raise money for cancer. Boy, you're some kind of guy. We're sure proud of you. Keep up the good work, all right? Thanks. At 11 years old, Michael was cancer-free. Although I'm healthy and, you know, I, I don't have to worry about that part of my life anymore as far as going through that, that disease ever again. I, I still have a bigger battle. That battle is to see that every child doesn't have to go through cancer. Every person doesn't have to go through cancer. And that's why we're working hard for this goal. He really wanted to get out there, and he was everywhere. He started to really make a difference. Meeting Prime Minister of Canada, Pope John Paul II, 
writing a book with his grandmother, appeared on Baywatch, and he starred in the MTV show together. Michael beat his cancer not once but twice, but unfortunately, with everything that he went through, the procedures and the surgeries caused his, uh, him to die of respiratory failure in the end. With the continuing research, we are getting less side effects and better treatments for our children. We have been able to reduce the side effects for a number of children who are being treated for childhood cancer. And this has to do with our ability now to better personalize treatment by knowing when a child doesn't have as an aggressive or bad of a tumor. Therefore, they don't have the long-term complications that children used to have being treated for the same cancer 20 years ago. Uh, one of the really wonderful things that the Michael Cuccioni Childhood Cancer Program can be proud of is we've actually contributed to the world in being able to identify whether tumors are bad or good on molecular characterizing. Uh, and some of the research done in Vancouver by this program that Michael helped uh, build, we have been able to improve and help identify those children that have bad tumors and good tumors. Going back 40 years ago, uh, a child diagnosed with, uh, with uh, leukemia had about a you know, greater than 80% chance of not making it. Nowadays, it's completely the other way around. We have about 85% cure rates just based on chemotherapy alone. Even though we've had great advances in the treatment of childhood cancer, childhood cancer still remains the number one cause of non-accidental deaths in children. Although cure rates for some cancers have gone up, others are not having much success. Our goal is not only to cure cancer. We want to make sure that all our children have a healthy life after cancer. If I got cancer at my age, and I still like to think I'm young, but I don't have that much ahead of me. And saving my life is valuable, but nothing like saving the life of a child who might have 60 or 70 years ahead of them. Now I'm here with such happiness to know that I'm gonna, the Michael Cushoni Foundation is going to be helping children who are in my shoes. Um, and I'm, I'm, I've almost got tears to my eyes. Uh, the thought that hopefully Someday, we are getting there. We are going to get a, a cure that is, is not going to be as painful as the disease itself. We were honored and privileged to have not only been chosen to be Michael's parents, but to have him in our lives. He was an amazing young man. I hope one day soon, we'll all be celebrating the cure for cancer because of the Michael Cochoni Childhood Cancer Research Program and the amazing research that's being done for our children. And I'll never forget the day while he was going through his treatments, he looked at the children at the hospital with him and said, Dad, what if the cure is in one of these children? I believe he's on to something. Knowing that these children had to go through the battle of their lives, knowing that some of these children would not make it, and some would. But to me, that's what continues to inspire me. Seeing the children who pass away, the children who have to suffer, the children who make it. All of these children continue to inspire me to want to make a difference. And I'm never going to stop. Mark my words, never going to stop. We are going to see this here.